As we continue our coverage of two sessions here to talk about China's economy growth and outlook is Yan Liang, Professor of Economics at Willamette University. Great to have you on the program again. What do you think are the key policy highlights in terms of the economy discussed this week? Yeah, good to be with you, Sally. So I think really what we have seen is that the government has set up a ambitious uh, but achievable target and has a sound plan to support it. So we look at the fiscal uh, aspect. Uh, there has been proactive fiscal policy, even though the deficit to GDP ratio is set at 3%, but they also uh, announced a special long-term bond uh, from the government, from the central government, that will help to uh, provide financing for scientific innovations, urban development, food and energy securities. And so all these uh, increase the security c capacity in the key areas. Mm -hmm. um, there's also 3.9 trillion uh, local bonds that would help the local government to continue to spend uh, counter -cyclical, cyclically to support the local economy, but also to deliver the necessary social programs and public services. And I think they also hinted, you know, um, prudent monetary policy that would support uh, necessary liquidity to the economy. And then on top of that, I think there are a lot of su uh, supportive policies in, for example, promoting uh, consumption, some sort of cash for clunks. Uh, consumer appliances upgrade, upgrades kinds of policies. Um, there also have been policies um, that would help to, uh, for example, promote more jobs, promote uh, you know better living standards uh, by providing subsidies to uh, residents and hukou uh, relaxation and so on and so forth. Mm. China is trying to move away from that really fast growth to a more sustaining long-term growth. So talk a bit about the importance of vigorously developing strategic and emerging, emerging industries as a way of sustaining China's growth. What are these industries and, and what kind of you know, transition are we looking at? Right, that's a great question. So I think China's overarching goal is to have the so-called high-quality development. So what that means is, you know, they are going to foster the so-called new quality productive force that will rely on productivity growth and driven by technological innovations. So they have mapped out some of the so-called future emerging industries like AI, humanoid uh, robots, uh, new energies, new materials, high-end equipment, biotech, and so on and so forth. But more importantly, uh, these technologies are not going to just drive those particular industries, but they're also going to be applied to some of the traditional industries and make these traditional industries smarter and greener. And then I think also on the sustainable aspect, uh, China has set the goal you know, to improve the energy intensity uh, this year by another 2.5%. So I think, you know, both, uh, you know, both all these initiatives basically point out that, you know, China is trying to promote the kind of quality based uh, innovation driven productivity led growth and also do it in a more sustainable in terms of environment, right, in terms of resource conservation. Uh, manner. Mm. You, you mentioned the resource conservation and sustainability. This has been an ongoing conversation in China, you know, sustainable development in, in terms of its, of its environmental goals. What kind of, chi you know, green policies is China looking at? Can you give us some examples about, you know, what will be applied to these more traditional, um, traditional industries, but also new green industries that are going to be developed in order to sustain this kind of growth? Right. So I think there are many examples, but let me just maybe talk about two, uh, one of which is, you know, the renewable energy. So China basically added, you know, 59 percent of the global total renewable energy capacity last year. Um, so we're talking about solar, we're talking about wind, we're talking about nuclear. So all these renewable energies are really helping China uh, to transition in a more renewable path, right, as far as energy consumption is concerned. Um, and China has also manufacturing a lot of the new uh, sort of the green tech, uh, green technologies in terms of solar panels. You know, China is uh, providing over 80 percent of the global production of solar panels. And so all of these would help not only China, but also the rest of the world to move towards that more re renewable energy path. And on top of that, I think China has been utilizing, you know, data, Internet and uh, uh, robotics. Um, you know, China last year has added 268,000 industrial robots, uh, more than the rest of the world combined. So using these technologies, what China is trying to do is to make, uh, you know, really efforts to conserve energies, to make sure that uh, the production is efficient so that they don't waste resources along the way. So I think these are some of the examples that both from the renewable energy aspect, 
but also from the advanced manufacturing aspects, um, China is trying to you know, promote that uh, uh, sustainable growth. All right, Yan Liang, Professor of Economics at Willamette University, thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Sally.